Yeah, man, what's good, guys? Your boy Hugo the Savage back again for another movie review. Creed 3, finally. Finally. Uh, about seven weeks after its release, I finally got to watch it. A um, bit late to the party, but, you know. Hey, everything's moving too quick pace for me. Movies are being released too quick pace. They're out of the cinemas too quick pace. And listen, I got a busy life, so I wasn't able to watch it when I wanted to watch it. Um... Because a few other movies I'd gone to the cinemas to view at that time. So, yeah, can't be in the cinemas all day, every day. But, let's get to the movie review, man. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, go over the synopsis of the movie. And how I felt and stuff like that. And then what I'll do is I'll give you a spoiler warning and drop all the uh, spoilers in the back of the video. But by now, everyone's probably seen it. So, um, But yeah, Creed 3. Um, overall views on the movie... I was a, a little bit apprehensive going into it. As much as I was excited, I knew that it was Michael B. Jordan's first debut directing. Um, I know Ryan Coogler's still there. It's going to be the first one without Sylvester Stallone. And Rocky is one of my favourite movies of all time. So uh, it's up there for me where... <sighs> I felt a bit funny going into it because obviously you've seen all the stories about Sylvester Stallone not want to be, what I wanted to be a part of it. Not based on Michael B. Jordan, but based on... I think Irvine Winkler and all them kind of things. So, a bit apprehensive, but I watched it. Um, I enjoyed the movie. I thought the movie was shot great. I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. The um, the cinematic direction of this was incredible. It was sharp. The the colours and the sharpness of the, the whole show was clean. Um, I thought the concept was very great. I thought the story was basic, but I think... Based on the the whole movie arc of Rocky and Creed, the stories are basic. They are very basic. And what happens is you give a basic structure for the movie and then you get detailed and integral characters in between. And it's, the, it's all based on the character building and not so much everything else around it. So the biggest thing to take away from all these movies is that people call them boxing movies, but really they're not boxing movies. Um, the story of this one, not really spoiling anything you can see in the trailer. Um, it's a general story, what you've probably seen before in different ways, in drug dealing movies and stuff like that. Two kids, one a little bit older, best friends as kids, damn near brothers, one's a little bit more on the edgy side. Um, get in trouble, one gets away, one goes to prison for a long time. The other one who didn't makes a success of his life and then the other one's released from prison at a later date. Um, and wants a piece of the pie, wants a bit of what the other guy got. Um, feels a bit hard done by the fact that the, the other one didn't stay in touch with him and, you know, do the brotherly thing while he's been locked up. And, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. And you know they're going to fight each other because you can see that in the trailer. Um, there was a bit more detail in the story than I thought while I was watching. I thought, oh, okay, it's basic, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to rate this a good movie. There was a little bit more to it. Um, I'd say for the actors, I think Jonathan Majors in this was really good. I know it's a bit weird because obviously what stuff what's going on in real life, but I, I don't care about that. Until he's proven guilty and stuff like that, he's just a great actor to me. I don't care about the person as much anyway. Um, his acting's great. He, his, his character was very menacing. He's very troubling. He really, really took on the role of Someone who had been incarcerated and was troubled. Um, and you could see it on his face. And I think visually, the facial expression this man pulls with acting is everything. Um, he was playing an older character than Michael B. Jordan's character, but not much older. But they kept referring to him as being the older one. And he he looks older. Like Everyone knows about Jonathan Major. When you look at him, he doesn't look like a, a young guy. He's I think he's around 32, 33. But he looks a lot older than, than that in certain instances. But... I thought his acting was incredible. Michael B. Jordan done great. He's always been good in the Creed movies. There's always a running joke for me with his other movies that Michael B. Jordan feels like he doesn't say much in any of his movies. Like, even though he's a good actor, he doesn't seem to say much. Either. Obviously, in this, it's all about him, so there's a lot more dialogue. I love the relationship that him um, and his missus have in, in the movies, always, and him and his mum, and obviously his daughter's growing up now. Um, I like how much they incorporated the sign language and stuff into this one. Um, Made it feel real. I think that's the biggest takeaway because Michael B. Jordan's character, well, Adonis plays, is a boxer who's retired now and he's still on all the billboards and doing all this stuff. 
it's very believable because it's literally what Michael B. Jordan does in real life apart from he's not retired. But being on all the billboards and stuff and being so famous and I thought that was dope. So to the spoilers, everything I said with the structure, correct. He goes prison because Michael B. Jordan, well Adonis knocks out this guy outside of a liquor store um, and then the guy's friends start to punch and beat up um, Adonis. And then Dame, who is Jonathan Major's character, take, pulls out a gun and then the police pull up and um, Adonis runs off. So that's the synopsis for that. Um, while he's in prison, he does write letters and stuff to, to Adonis constantly, year in, year out. And Adonis' mum is, you know, Cre um, Apollo's wife, kept the letters away from him because she knew that he was a bad character and she wanted him to have a better life. So um, that's kind of it. So when he comes out of prison, he wants a title shot. Because it was always his dream to be the champion more than Adonis. It was all him. Everything Adonis has got is what he wanted. Um, so he has to find ways to be, you know, get this, this title fight. Adonis is saying you can't just get a title fight. All these different things. And then there's a situation what happens where... Um, who, what's his name? Drago's son, who's supposed to be fighting the champion, um, gets injured. He, somebody hits him with a truncheon in a party. Breaks his arm. He can't fight. And then... We do. We go through the Apollo Rocky thing where we give a, a challenger a big title shot. Um, come to find out later on through um, Apollo uh, Adonis' mum for a picture that he had been sending from jail that the guy who broke Drago's son's hand went was in prison with him. So it was all a set up in the first place to get the title fight. Once Adonis realizes this and goes to approach him, his whole character changes. He goes. He went from this secluded incarcerated type guy to this like smug uh, arrogant and then you realize that he's been playing him the whole time um and yeah and Adonis comes out of retirement to fight him because that guy gets a title shot wins the title kind of like club Lang, and he goes back to fight him and then obviously Adonis is gonna win in the end and all that stuff the stuff in between that I didn't it's not that I didn't like it there was something missing from the movie but it was still great but the thing what was missing was pretty obvious it was it was rocky and it didn't need to be a major role. Obviously, his role was going to diminish from Creed 1 to Creed 3 anyway, even if he stayed a part of it because he wasn't really needed as such. But there's an event where um, Adonis' mom has a stroke, a second stroke, and she passes away. And it's not realistic that Rocky wouldn't contact Adonis, that wouldn't wouldn't be at the funeral. It, it's not, it's not, it wouldn't happen. Or the fact that Adonis came out of retirement and it's on live TV with Stephen A. Smith. Of course, Rocky would get in contact with him, but there was nothing. The only mention of Rocky we had in this was when they're talking about Rocky and um, Apollo, the title shot. That, that, that's it. So I thought that was a little bit weird. I get why. But at the same time, and it, it doesn't take away from Adonis taking his own path as a grown man and he's got his kid and his wife and stuff like that. That's perfect. It was beautiful. I thought that was great. But... That was missing from Rocky. That was it. We had the theme music still, you know, the remixed um, Rocky music I've, I've always loved in Creed. But the, the Sylvester Stallone magic, the little sprinkle of that over the top of this movie, elevates this movie from a really, really good movie to a great movie because I thought it was dope. Um, and honestly, when I'm talking about stuff I didn't like in the movie, that's it. So it actually in something that I, in the movie I didn't like, I just, it was something missing and it would have made it better. Also, I mentioned the cinematics. I thought it was incredible. They they really dove in on the Dolby and IMAX sounding. So depending on what features you've got on your TV or the cinemas, you can it picks up. It's beautiful. Like the Dolby surround sound. They do this thing where they silence out the crowd and you can just hear them two punching each other. There's a dream sequence in there where... It's not a dream sequence. They're in the middle of the fight. They're running around 11. And I know what the concept is. They're trying to make it to the audience that this is... Not, it's nothing to do with the crowd and his wife and anything like that. It's just between me and you. So they zone in on that and the crowd kind of fades away in this dreams kind of sequence. This fantasy boxing sequence. And then like they've got like they're in the ring. A couple of punches get thrown and then the jail cell appears behind the Dunnis. And then, you know, a couple because I forgot to mention the guy they beat up was abusing them in, in the care home when they was younger. Not sexually abusing, but he was beating them up and stuff like that. So that's why Adonis lost it and beat him up in the first place. So you had little things from them rooms and stuff. And it was cool, but I don't think it fit this movie. And I didn't like that part as much. But everything else was great. Um, 
like I said, the colours, the, the entrances, the all these different things look beautiful in the movie. Um, and yeah, there was anime inspired stuff throughout the fight. And if you don't watch anime, you won't notice, you'll just think it's great, it's shot different. But there's definitely, for, for me, it looked like, I think, it, if I'm correct, I think it might be Cell in the Cell Saga of Dragon Ball Z. When Gohan punches him in the stomach and he's like, oh, bro. They, he, he copied it to a T and Michael B. Jordan gets, well, Adonis gets punched in the, in the stomach and he does the exact same move but it hones in on the ribs and that. I thought it was beautiful, it was dope and it's a great shout to anime. But if you're not into it, you'll just think it's great either way. But that's my review of the movie. Out of 10, I'm going to give this a... I'm quite strict with movies because I've watched so much great. I think this is better than Creed 2 but not better than Creed 1. Maybe. I think that's how it goes. Hold on. Creed 2 is that when Rocky goes to his family? Yeah, the Drago story in Creed 2 is a bit of a myth. So, I think this is better than Creed 2. Not better than Creed 1, but of course it's not going to be better than Creed 1. Isn't it? Um, I'm going to give it a 7.5. It's close to an 8. I think the sprinkle of Rocky would have took it to like an 8.5. Easy, but... I yeah, I'm going to go around 7.5, which is not a bad thing. It's a great time out if you're going to watch it with the family. Probably got like a week left in the cinemas. Um, to get it at home, watch it. It's great. It's a great movie. So, um, yeah, that's my review on it, man. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section. A few people have been messaging me and stuff, asking me about when I'm going to do Creed Review and all that stuff like that. And I kind of ignored them because I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't want to I didn't want to start a conversation about Creed and people start throwing spoilers into me. So, now it's done. But thank you very much. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment below, you heard Pablo in the background. Peace.